Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. Check out the site watchcomplications.com. Subscribe here and follow me on Instagram at watch underscore complications. Hit the bell if you want updates. Here we have another making custom dials video. Not that long ago, I took a dive into using water slide decals to create sort of a lower cost option to creating a custom dial as opposed to pad printing, which is fairly expensive cost proposition. If you look around a little bit, you'll see that people have sort of mixed results. And I was getting mixed results using them for dials, but they're used on a regular basis for people that are into creating models. And what I mean by that is like, I think cars or figurines, that sort of stuff when you want decals on uh, characters or ships or cars, that sort of thing, airplanes. And so they're popular. But one of the things that you have to really care about, pay attention to is adhesion and the different glues and, and chemicals that will help you get the best adhesion possible and also make it look as natural as possible. I found a couple of products that are used in those sorts of applications and thought, will those work on watch dials and would it work the same way? And that particular product, let me show it to you, is called Microset and Microsole. And perhaps if you're into water slide decals or you've looked into this much at all in terms of making your own custom dials, then maybe you've come across them before. And so my big question was, how do these work? Short answer, good. As I mentioned, I did an initial test not that long ago prior to this recording. So if you haven't, go back and look at that video maybe first. And then if you wanna know how I sort of perfected that process and got it figured out for what really works for the dials I'm creating and working on, then watch this video. No worries, we're gonna do a wrist check. I just wanna to wait till we're a little bit more up close under the camera over the work pad. Before we get to that, two of my favorite things when it comes to watches, if you need an app to help you manage your collection and you have iOS, check out Watchy. And if you're into all kinds of things, watches, leather goods, travel pods, straps, watches, t-shirts, then check out Vario. The links for those things are in the description below. Take a look at those great products, you won't be disappointed. As we get started here, we'll just take a quick up close look at that. Wrist check, Christopher Ward, C60 bronze ombre on their hybrid rubber canvas strap. Love the feel of this. You can see the buckle needs to catch up with that patina. I've had this for quite a bit of time, so it's aged really well. This is about me testing the process and giving some insight into that, but I also might use a dial if it comes out okay. So what I have here is actually a test dial that has a little bit of an imperfection on it. And maybe you can see it, it's close to the, the center hole. There's a little bit of a raised bit of the paint. And so I'm going to put a decal that has an imperfection on it, but I want to see how the rest of the decal adheres to it. So I've got a dial that I've painted. I had uh, stripped the original uh, paint off of it, uh, repainted it, primed it, and then we're going to use micro set and micro sole, as I mentioned, or as you saw in the video description. We will start with micro set, which is a, a setting softener, so it'll get the surface ready and can be used directly on the decal as well. And then once that's dried, we'll put some micro sole on, which really helps adhere it to the surface and gives it a painted on look as opposed to uh, some sort of printing or surface texture. So it really pulls it down to the surface. And we'll give these a go and see how they do with regard to decals on watch dials. For these tests, I'm still sticking with uh, my nautical themed I've got to come up with a name for this particular dial design that I did. It's got a fun look about it. Really like it. I'm going to need to have a couple of Q-tips around and I've always got some peg wood and then a little paintbrush, a little art paintbrush. And always good to have some paper towels around as well. So let's crack open the micro set. This is my first time dealing with this stuff. So I'll set that down right here. It'll be interesting to see what this micro set does to the painted dial surface usually would be used on some sort of modeling surface. So I'm going to wipe the edge of the brush off and then just apply this across the entire dial. So rub it across there, kind of coat the whole surface. Because you want to maintain a, a pristine look. Okay, so now that I've got that on there, I've got water on a little teacup holder here. And that's going to be for soaking the, the decal. So I'll set this plate down here. Got to get my tweezers. I guess I forgot to mention it's good to have some tweezers around too. So 
So we're going to take the decal. I'm going to soak it here for about 60 seconds, 30, 60 seconds, something like that, which will help get that backing off of the decal. Okay, so once that's had enough time in the water, we will pull this out. And I'm going to go ahead and move, I'm actually going to set it on a paper towel and move this plate a little bit out of the way. You can see I'm just going to pull that off, slides off pretty easily. And then I'll use my tweezers and we'll get this in the right location on the dial. Sorry if my head gets in the way a little bit here. It wrapped around on itself a little bit there in the corner, but it's not interfering with anything, so that's okay. And these dials have this little notch at 3 o'clock, so you just would use that to align it. Now I'm just going to roll a Q-tip over the surface of it, getting these bubbles out that are underneath of it. So just roll out towards the edge, kind of start at center. Can work my whole way around. Again here I'm not striving for perfection. You can see the decal is slightly messed up already. This is more about does it work without putting it in the oven for a little bit after applying it. I've got some better looking dials and decals that I'll try next after we run through the process once. Now I may not show all of that on this video, but I'll run through the process twice. Really easy to move these around so you got to be pretty careful when you've got it kind of close to where you want it. Okay, it looks pretty good and the micro set is actually really helping uh, keep it semi in place. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit more of the micro set and put it on top of the decal. And just be careful not to brush so hard that it moves. What this is going to do is this is going to soften up the decal and it might even start to look like it's bubbling but what it's doing is it's loosening up and softening things and then it will start to relax as it dries out. So I put a little bit more of the micro set on, and we are done with that part of the process. Now we just got to let it dry for a little bit. You might wonder how long we're going to let it dry. Well, and I think uh, maybe five, ten minutes, something like that. See how that goes? This design looks really good to the to the naked eye. When you get up close on our macro lens, you can tell it's printed off of a laser printer, you get a little bit of aliasing uh, going on. Depending on what kind of printer you got, it's going to vary about how good that print comes out on the water slide decal, but it's not bad, particularly to the naked eye. And a lot of people want to do it this way because it's a little bit more accessible and certainly a lot, lot cheaper than the pad printer route that you've seen me do, or maybe some others. So you can kind of maybe see some bubbling. That's normal. There you go. There's a good view of it. So again, it's working on softening up that decal and then it will relax and it'll be fine. So not to worry if you see the bubbling. Don't mess with it. Okay, now that that's dried out, we're going to put on the micro sole. So we'll open that up, get the paintbrush again. Again, not wanting to completely soak it. can tell just rubbing the brush across the surface that that decal has dried out pretty well. And you don't want to move the decal around anyway. It shouldn't. It's adhered pretty well in place thanks to the micro set. And something tells me, even I can see it now already, it's going to make this a lot more vibrant. It's going to really make it look like it's painted on directly as opposed to applied via a decal. And these are film free anyway, so they shouldn't look glossy or have residue once it's off of the dial either. All right, so we're going to set that there and let that dry off. 
and we'll check back in in a second once this is dry. Again, I'm going to let this go for, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Just keep in mind on this one that it was imperfect. You can see that there's some uh, missing ink here on the line at 5 o'clock and a few other little things. So this is just going to give me an idea if the overall process worked. And actually, if some of these little bits here stay, that's pretty good. If it does work really well, then we'll get a dial that has no imperfections in terms of the paint itself and a really nice clean decal. So let's see if this actually worked. So as I start to lift this up, I can see that the decal is going to come up with it. So it is not adhered at all. What does that tell me? Well, it tells me it's not going to work on this painted surface. And I think probably what I should do is what I did the first time. Throw this in the oven and bake it for 20 minutes at about 200 degrees. So I'm going to do that and see what happens. All right, so our dial is out of the oven. I baked it at 200 degrees for about 20 minutes. Now only through testing am I going to figure out, okay, is it the micro set that wasn't causing it to stay without baking it? Is it the micro sole? Should I apply micro sole after it's been out of the oven? and then let that dry again and then take it off. What I'm gonna try this first time is just to take the decal paper off and maybe next time we'll see if I need to use micro sole after I've baked it. I think the micro chemicals have given it a little bit of a darker hue, which is fine, it looks great actually. It looks almost a little bit more of a vintage feel. We'll see what it looks like once I have the paper off though. It could just be the decal paper. I'm gonna use some peg wood here just to Put some pressure on here while I pull the backing. Oh yeah, the the collar, that vintage look I had is just the paper. It didn't do that when I didn't use the chemicals. So maybe that's a good sign, you know. And it's actually sticking really, really well so far. Let's see what it does on this side. So far, it looks like I'm getting much better adhesion on this. And no residue of any kind. I can't see any residue on this. All right, now that I've got that started, maybe I can just pull it back this way. I can already tell you this is going to look a lot better, and this process is going to work. It's going to look great. Even those little bits have adhered to the surface that were separated here, which is great. Those little specks stayed in place uh, through the whole process. And that tells me that the main part that actually looks good, you can see there's some of those imperfections. Here's this paint imperfection I had, which is why I used the test dial. This is completely painless compared to the first time I did it in the first video. Yep, that looks great. Give you another sort of up close look here. Transfer went really well. So this one was intended to not be perfect, but I've got some other dials painted and ready to go. And we're gonna apply them. So in terms of micro set and micro sole, I'm sure there are other combinations of the process that would work, but I followed sort of the, your general steps you would use if you're applying them on some sort of a figure or a model or something like that, the micro set and the micro sole. And the only thing I really did different was I put it in the oven at 200 degrees for 20 minutes and it looks wonderfully adhered. Now what you could do is you could give it a coating of a gloss, a mat, and it would just seal it completely to the surface. And again, under a macro lens, you might notice that it's not as smooth lines as you might have with, you know, pad printing. But you know, to the naked eye, on a wristwatch under some glass, you, you can't tell. You just you just can't. So 
what a fun process. All right, so I'm gonna do another one and you'll see maybe what that final dial looks like. So let's do another one. All right, so here we go. We're gonna do this again. Really nice, clean dial this time. You know, these dials I make myself, so they're always gonna have a little bit more of a handmadeness around them, which is perfectly okay with me and my clients. So I'm gonna rub some micro set on the surface. The micro set kind of clusters, you know, on the, on the surface. While that's sitting there, I'm gonna drop the, the decal in water and let that soak for a couple minutes. That's over here on the other side of the screen. You can't really see it. And that only takes about 30 to 60 seconds. I don't know if I'll skip around some or not on this second round. Of course, it won't take too much more of your time. But I wanna show you what the final product looks like when we're done. Get the tweezers, take the decal out of the water, like so. I'll just lay it really briefly just on a piece of paper towel just to get some of that initial water off of it. And then I'll use my finger to gently slide it off the edge. Like so. And we'll flip this around. Looking for the three o'clock. All you have to do is get it kind of close. You want to leave some edges on this so you can kind of work with it, obviously. And at any point, if you need to give it a little bit more water to get that to settle down, go for it. This will remain movable for a little bit. I like the same process we did before. Start at center and kind of work the, the Q-tip toward the edge taking any air bubbles out. Basically, you want every bit of the printing right on the surface, nothing between it and the paint. The micro set really does make this a little bit of a simpler process. All right, now that that's sort of in place, I'm gonna put a little bit more of the micro set on. And don't do it to where it'll move the decal around, just slowly and patiently just brush it on. Don't need a ton, just enough to wet in the surface. Stuff seems pretty forgiving, which is nice. Cap back on here, we'll let that dry. All right, next step, micro sole. Get the brush in here. Apply this as evenly as possible across the surface. You just want to get it wet. It'll soak in. And the purpose of these chemicals is just to ensure adhesion. So that's all I'm going to put on there. And then I'm going to go turn the oven back on. And we'll bake the dial for 20 minutes. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I have different numbers for this design in case I want to turn it into a series. So I used a number one decal on this. This is a number three decal. I'm thinking maybe doing evens will be mechanical watches, the odds would be quartz versions, depending on what kind of cases and stuff I want to put them in, what other kind of looks people want for these. I also want to mention as part of this overall process that if you watch other YouTube videos online that show micro set and micro sole, just keep in mind that most of them are for figurine and model decals. And one of the differences I've seen with, I watched a bunch of the videos, one of the biggest differences I've seen between what I've watched and the process I've gone through is that on those, they just let the micro set dry for a little while and they let the micro sole dry for a little while and then they remove the plastic, but that may not work on a dial and it hasn't worked on mine. You still need to bake it. And after going through that process a couple times now, this looks really good. The color is vibrant, even though I still have the plastic on and it seems to be adhering really well, but you have to go through that extra step, likely, if you're doing this on a dial surface. So just keep that in mind if you're watching videos on using the product. The product is one thing. The application of that product to a particular surface is a different thing. So don't think that it going on one particular surface means it's gonna work that way on another. That's not my experience with this stuff, and it may not be yours either. It takes some time testing, 
and just so go through the process and see how it works out. So almost done here with this last one. Then we'll just take a look at what it looks like up close and we'll be done. And hopefully this one has as much success as the test one did with the adhesion. So when I did this before without the micro set and micro sole, I had to go extremely slow and be careful with removing the plastic. It would easily tear up pieces of the dial uh, decal. And that's just not the case after having used the product, which is wonderful. It peels up really easily. It's not trying to stick to the surface necessarily. And it's just, it's, it's just a ton easier. It's just a world of difference. Okay. Almost there. Let's pull this around the edge. It just comes up so easily. Oh. I think I've got the process nailed down. Then it's just a matter of working on, okay, what colors do you want? What graphics? Making sure you get that aliasing, anti-aliasing right for up close. And this plastic is what has sort of that burnt color to it a little bit. Once you peel that back off, it's back to that vibrant white color. Now I have a dial that could be used in a watch. This is beautiful. Uh, much more cost effective and efficient than pad printing. It may not be as good a quality up close. You know, if you're talking the difference between buying a three to $500 watch that's a custom one-off make versus you know, a thousand to two thousand dollars because it's a custom one off pad printed dial, then this is the simple choice for a lot of people. We'll take a little bit more of an up close look at it here for you. You can kind of see that digital look to the logo there. I think some of that's because I copy and pasted uh, the logo into the graphic file I used for this even though it looks nice and crisp and clean within the graphic program, what I've done to test the next time around is I actually copy the complete layer and all the individual arcs and lines and things like that into the file. And my guess is it'll come out a little bit cleaner, but again, to the naked eye, you really can't see it and you're not gonna really notice it under a crystal. It's only when you get under a macro lens that you start to see those issues. Fun design, remember my brand name is 106. Usually uh, the 10 slash six is underneath of the hat. But what I've done here is I've put an underline under the 10 and the six. And that's my brand, 10 six watches. Check it out on the website. Perhaps you might want a watch that has this kind of a dial. Do you want a particular number? Let me know, I'll make it up for you. Now some of the stuff about dial making is based on illusion. And one of the things I can do to make it look a little bit less from a computer printer, I'll call it, as opposed to a pad printer, is what you'd want to do anyway, and that is put some sort of surface coat on this. So whether that's a acrylic surface, something that's either a polished or a matte finish, something that needs to go on the top, it'll seal it up nice and tight and keep it from wear and tear, even though it's just inside of a watch case, so it shouldn't get much anyway, you know, protect from UV rays, that sort of stuff, because a lot of the clear coats are UV resistant. I'm gonna put something on here. I think this will look really good with a matte finish. I'll put that on the test dial, see what that looks like. Some particular customer might want a polished surface, clear coat. That's fine, but I'm gonna try it with matte, see what that looks like. All right, so it's hard to notice it too much without seeing it in the flesh. But this has received the matte clear coat. A good one or two layers on top of this. Like I said, it masks the lines just a little bit. Gives it a wonderful texture. If there are a few little bumps or dips here and there in the actual painted surface of the dial, the white or other colors, it will help mask that a little bit. Matte clear coat, it's a wonderful thing. I have got my process down for this particular type of a dial design. And, you know, I don't know how much I'll use it compared to the pad printer, but it's an option, a lower cost option. And these days, that's not a bad thing to have. Hope it helps. Let's check out. Well, I don't have much more to say about it. You've seen what you need to see. I've explained my process. 
I hope you find it helpful. If you're into tinkering, thinking about making your own little custom watches or custom dials for modding projects or just something you want to make special for you, someone else, hopefully my experience, the process, and information I've been able to share will help you do the same thing. I'm Brian. This is Watch Complications. Follow me here. Subscribe. Hit the bell if you want updates. Check me out on Instagram at watch underscore complications. And always, as always, check out all the wonderful details on the website, watchcomplications.com. I'm Brian. I am out.